hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. And our favorite commentator is here. Mark Henretti. Sandra Fesic, everyone. Yes. No. <laughs> From Dancing on Ice, British Eurosport. Mark, welcome back to The Skating Lesson. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all that you guys are doing. I have the greatest respect for what you're doing to promote skating and getting another audience in. So kudos. Well, thank you. I dressed in honor of Cicerone today. We have the pants as well. Yes, <laughs> we we tried to dance. For, yeah, we're I all about it. Memo. Plum. Yeah, I didn't get the memo yeah. that we had to dance appropriately. I've got some costumes. I could some old skating costumes. I could. And I just want to know I, for Jonathan Byer, I have a gift for him. I found that I have two of these. I didn't realize that Liam Cross, our favorite artist, sent me two. So in Jonathan's new apartment for his housewarming gift. We have Tessa Virtue <laughs> and Scott Moyer. <laughs> Welcome him at all times. So doing Moulin Rouge, no less. Oh, yes. great! And so that'll be for the Vegas room, and we yes. can get um, <laughs> a French caricature for the Lincoln Center room. Because yes. <laughs> yeah, I, this is this is a whole new realm for the show, like the whole choreographing of your placement in the room and everything. This yes. Is, I, they come from very suitably tall. Mm -hmm. I think that we should start again. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, watching everything, Jonathan, what would, we have to discuss important things. The trench coat Marie France is wearing. Was it raining oh, in oh, the wait. arena? What was going on? What is I happening? Did, I brought a prop. I brought yes. a Marie France trench coat <laughs> so I could just be as faux elegant, or yes. I could be faux elegant compared to her elegant. She just sat there like this. Just nodding with mm. approval. But it's too Ooh. hot for me, so I'm going to take it off. Are you but. as mesmerized by her as everyone else is? I mean, she was the real star of this event. Uh, oddly, I knew in coming on here today that that would be a talking point. I, I assumed it would be, <laughs> and it's come up and like, before we discussed any skater. Yeah. Money from Oh, has come up, and I thought it was a very good quote. I thought she looked every bit the part of the superstar that she is. Yes, this is her fifth world title in a row that she has coached slash choreographed. Uh, she also won the Olympics five well, years. It makes me, like it fascinates me now. Like she's obviously, I mean, I don't know how many teams she had. It seems like half the event come from that stable. I just think now, what is the motivation? You know, what? How does she? In the same way, I suppose as Terry. An orser, what is the motivation of money, the honey? They uh, are Marie France. I saw her, she talks. had this like Mercedes with this uh, her sunroof, <laughs> and she was looking fabulous. I mean, those clothes she is wearing, and if you can win, you why not? If you're a Terry and you are just imagine the money she is pulling, it. imagine the money that a Kazakhstan is paying her to get those marks. <laughs> but yeah. then I don't want to. It's like, I don't want to think that. I think you're totally right, but I'm thinking, no, it should be all and about And Terry's fillers don't it. pay for themselves, honey, okay? To look that good? I mean, come on. She... But even even though it became a bit of a factory and I became a little bit nervous about what was coming out of Montreal this fall on the Grand Prix, because some of it seemed a little stale, some of it seemed a little bit more phoned in, because they understandably are a bit overwhelmed by the numbers... Oh but kind of by the time we got to the World Championships, a lot of these teams did look good and a lot of the choreography did become a bit more innovative than I anticipated. So I think kind of throughout this season, they have learned how to manage such high numbers at high levels, I think. But I was a little bit nervous to start. Yeah. No, I think I, if I, I were an ice dancer now, I wouldn't go because it seems a little oversaturated, even though I think the training there is so good. Well, yeah, you do wonder what the others, like the the younger teams or the teams that are lower down now, think. Do they think I have to go there? Mm -hmm. Is it, I don't know how politically powerful she is, Dave. You perhaps know how strong she is. She's powerful, but, yes, but but I mean, obviously, she she guarantees to produce quality. That's mm -hmm. evident. But I suppose for for a younger team now looking up, do they want to be in the same vein as all these others, or does who's going to break the mold next? Somebody has to break the mold next because. You know, Papadakis and Cicerone have created this style of skating that is now inherent in so many of the teams. I wonder what will be next. And will, could it come from that stable? I think that the Igor's team of Avonlea Wynn and her um, Kolesnik, I think that they are a pretty talented team to move ahead. Mm -hmm. And then you also have Ponomarenko, who's obviously connected, although... You know, if the Sun is disciplined enough to train hard enough to compete with Hawaii and those teams, I think that that'll be interesting to kind of see what happens moving forward. I think Hawaii and Baker are obviously the most vulnerable out of those teams. So we could start with them. Um, 
you know, what do you make about them this season? They made the Grand Prix final. They had a very surprise win. They A lot of ups and downs, I think, for this team. It seems like they're kind of in flux. They made the world championships, but maybe not... Maybe their career isn't moving forward as much as they thought it would a couple of years ago. Well, suppose they're in the same difficult position as so many of them are. They're in this state of flux and, and middle ground. And I just think... It's the, well, for me personally, watching the World Championships this year was the first time that I've not sort of felt a, a sense of angst and desire to be there because I just thought it's just so deep and so rich in talent and wealth. And for a team like Hawaii and Baker, I, I just wonder, I don't know how strong their self-belief is to wade through the waters, these difficult waters that they're in at the moment. Yeah. Do you anticipate that teams will retire between now? I mean, you have a situation where Weaver and Poje are kind of being professional skaters and amateur skaters at the same time, but their career isn't moving forward. So I wonder how many years they'll continue taking a slot. Well, that's the, the big thing. I look at so many of the teams now, like Weaver and Poggi, like Chalk and Bates, and think, from a skater's perspective, I think, why are they? Uh, why can they keep putting themselves through this? I want to understand what it is that motivates them to keep putting themselves through it. Because from my perspective, it must still be costing them a fortune. I don't know if... It, these coaches for these elite teams cut them good deals, but it must have cost them a fortune and the stress and anxiety and the life that they put on hold. Mm -hmm. Like I think of teams like Weaver and Poggi who were competing when I was competing. And I think, you know, the biological clock for these girls as well. Like, I, yeah. I, like what is the motivation for them to, to keep going? And is it because there aren't as many shows? Like the Thank You Canada Tour must have paid them, but there aren't a plethora of other opportunities in which to to gain revenue. I don't know. Like Certainly, over in Europe, there's art and ice, but there aren't, again, unless you go into the holiday and ice or Disney and ice, there aren't a lot of fee-earning jobs mm. for this caliber of skater. And is that why we are seeing them continue? That's know? what we're hearing. You know, I think for well, Weaver and Poggi, they've said that, you know, Virtue and Moyer took, you know, a lot of those slots for jobs. You know, and art and ice, <laughs> Papa Doc and Cicerone take one of those slots. And how many dancers are you going to put in a show? Well, exactly, and for the ice dancers, and I, I mean, for me, the ice dance event is one of the best events at the World Championship, but basically, if you're not more than one beer. Wait, Mark, are you holding a phone? Yeah. Yeah, it just got I a little muffled. I think, I think your finger is on the microphone. Oh, yeah. I need all the help from you guys that I can get. I'm a fan there it I'm is. Like, it's there okay. It it, it, I could just tell like the thumb was over. We want to hear your, totally your brilliant thoughts. So <laughs> <laughs> so here's my thing about um, Caitlin and John Luke specifically. Like there seemed to be a couple of interesting, everyone was very close score wise, relatively speaking in this top 10, but there seemed to be a couple of really heated battles between mm -hmm. a certain spot. And they seem very neck and neck right now with the Canadanes or whatever we're calling it, the Danish team that now represents Canada. And, um, you know, Hawaii and Baker were ahead of them in the short below them in the free and ultimately did place ninth where the Canadians placed 10th. However, to me, I'm very excited by the Canadian team because I think the potential seems far greater and I see their scores, especially in PCS, potentially skyrocketing pretty consistently um, in the upcoming seasons where I don't see that happening for Hawaii and Baker. So I think it may be difficult for them to maintain a top 10 position in the world, actually, because there's something a little more... Um, viscerally exciting and athletic about what's happening with the Canadian team, where the mismatched levels, phys you know, the mismatched physicality of uh, Caitlin and Jean Luc seem to have a cap then for their mm -hmm. their potential. I'm afraid, even though they do, they have some beautiful qualities. And when he does that sliding choreographic move, where he's in front of her, and it's kind of like a gender bending kind of like mm -hmm. moment. They almost need something more like that. They need to almost swing the pendulum towards the Piper and Paul quirkiness or something in order for them to come out of the fabric to me. I don't, what do or you like think about the actual... Or or something. Yeah. Yeah. What do, you, like, what, what do you make about Hawaii and Baker with this? Have they maxed out with the size? Because it looks like it's an issue at this point. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> such a touchy subject. And certainly if I'm yeah. commentating for pure sport, it's the elephant in the room that I can't talk about when you have teams that are aesthetically not fitting the mold of, you know, your Russian, like, like Sinatina and Katsalapov. Yeah. Um, 
And, and I think that, you know, you're so right. They have to be so special in another way in which to gain attention. I think, though, it's not impossible to still be a world medalist. Look at Denkman Stavisky. You know, he was so short and yet still managed to become a world champion. Um, for me, with them, I think, I think you're totally like Jonathan. I think that they do have to be something unique. They can't do what is of du jour, the Papadakis and mm-hmm. on style of, of, of the moment, which is so lyrical and, 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 and sensual and balletic, because they'll never compare. I wonder um, with, with them... And a gay guy is a sexy, he's a sexy guy, sexy, str- strong... He's man. a gorgeous man. I mean, you're... I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> you, and you get points for being pretty at Ice Dance. You do. So... It, well, it's so true, and I think I used to... <laughs> used to try to not believe that but it's so true we're looking at something that the more aesthetically beautiful that it is the more we're warm towards it yeah and that's not to say that they're not aesthetically beautiful yeah. we're just we have to compare yeah i mean when someone is as model good looking as nikolai Sorensen, you're going to get points for that they, and they use it to their advantage using the latin theme this year it was very smart to kind of play off of that because they're rebranding themselves. They went from kind of being a forgettable team from Denmark to being in a more relevant uh, federation. They've moved forward. They're more competitive because they have to train harder to even make it to the world and championships. What, yeah. Absolutely. Respect to them for making the bravest of decisions. How many people would have the balls to take a decision like that and run right. with it? And perhaps, you know, they've utilized it in the best way to motivate them to be better. Yeah. And, you know, any, any results that they get in the back of that, all the more power to them. Yeah. And I feel it's informative about how they're viewed, maybe even within the camp, because I think a lot of their material was much more inspired than mm-hmm. some of the other teams that were coming out. Like, I thought the choreographic sequence and the free dance was, like, really innovative and interesting and was providing me a little more, like, oh, that's a cool move, versus like, sort of the same old generic vocabulary that some of the other teams were using. And they just yeah. skate so big yeah. because they're so tall and broader and they just fill up the arena in a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, for Hawaii and Baker, I wonder with them and with um, Fearis, you know, uh, Susis and mm-hmm. Philip, you know, will they naturally have to switch camps? Will they have to call Caroline? Uh-huh. Will they have to because they're getting pushed down? They also have the world junior champions who seem to have a lot of upward momentum and potential. And you start to see that it's crowded at the top, whether or not Weaver and Poge stay in. Uh, well, what, what's be... interesting now is, uh, am I right in thinking that now with the results that we had, does Canada go down to two spots next year? Um, well, they were fifth and seventh. Fifth and seventh. So they get three spots. Five and seven oh, okay. is 12. Yeah, they have to be They're 13 or below. Yeah, so. Okay. But you have to see Sorensen and Baudry are there and then they have other teams in the wings now i could see weaver and poge doing another year like this because there will be another tessa virtue tour i don't know if it's going to be called thank you canada but next year i think you have to look if they're doing the fall that eventually doing both touring and competitions will probably be a disadvantage so they'll probably naturally be pushed out because there are other teams that are going to be competing and training full-time and just oh. the, the natural... Well, they push that because it, it, there's no validity for the Federation to push a team that they know is on its last legs if they have yeah. others. Through, whether or not they are deserving of their place. Or not. And that's why they're doing the Nikolai and Igor thing because that's like two political animals right. trying to help you every which way they could. The Israeli judge was helping Weaver and Poge as he was helping uh, Julin's teams. So they were getting the kind of almost quasi-Russian help. And there's a lot going on politically, but Weaver and Poge... I think for them, I loved their their uh, one foot skating in the beginning. That whole sequence they were doing with the in the side by side, I think, is so brilliant. But then when they get to the twizzle section and the and the dance spin, they look ancient compared to the other teams. Is, it, is it not normally the case that it's Andrew that has the foibles on the twizzles? And so oh, I, for. For that regard, I was like, oh, at least it wasn't Andrea again. Yeah. But, um, I kind mean, of, yeah. She's not yeah. brilliant at twizzling either, though. They both don't get down on their knees, but he is the one that really struggles with the twizzles, yeah. Well, suppose then you are looking at teams that are not... I mean, I know that they're still a team of this new system, but 
they're probably they probably were starting their skating yeah. education less in, in you know entrenched in it the way that some of these other teams are. Yeah, and it just seems like well, now Dave, you brought up the really interesting point about like the Igor mentality approaching ice dance versus. Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask you yeah. if that's strange to you. So when I visited um, Nikolai at the rink because I was filming uh, his daughter skating, right, and I asked. Annabelle and Andrew Laverick about the difference between, because Andrew has trained with both Igor and Nikolai, and I was asking him, the Tarasova look of ice dance, where they have people lean into the circle, versus the Igor, where they almost lean outside the circle, with their body and hip. And I was wondering if that's strange to you, that they would have two coaches with opposite views on even the basic lean over the edge. Well, I it's actually really interesting that you talk about like fundamental skating technique because yeah. to me there was a lineage that I was seeing in Hubble and Donahue and more so maybe I was looking for it in Chalk and Madison Chalk but like their skating style comes from a lineage that apparently stems from Gladys Hogg in in, in the UK and in London yeah. in the sixties and then that went on to France with Muriel and obviously Muriel down to Roman Ugenhauer and, and Marie France that whole group that lineage goes with mm. it and I see that in Hubble and Donahue and the Chalk and Bates more so perhaps now. Mm -hmm. um, but the Russian style, like when I, I think of Sinitsina at Salopov and probably Spielband's team is more so, it is a totally different style and it's certainly, it's not one that I appreciate as much aesthetically. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, I've, I, I and what know. do those differences really entail? And the Tarasova like, approach is a very striking with the lines, you know, the body line of a Tarasova Morozov kind of school of ice dance. Well, I think it's it's it, it's more angular. You say yeah. you say line, but line as in sustained aggressive approach into hitting position, yeah, as opposed to line still obviously made by another style, but just with a softer. Uh, Yes. The aggressive approach. Yeah. The Tarasa has a strong angle that they're doing with the body, right? Like there's that. Tarasa. Yeah, yes. I, I don't necessarily see technique so much in in that mm -hmm. as opposed to performance. I see performance okay. in that technique as opposed to when I see this French-Canadian style, I see skating skill. Mm -hmm. and there's undoubtedly skating skill in both, but that's what I, I, mm -hmm. I resonate with when I watch those different approaches. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that it's helped Chalk and Bates? Because obviously she's been criticized for years for not having the strongest skating skills. They've kind of had a little bit of a rebirth. Do you see better flow and skating skills from them this season? Yeah. It is, it is tricky to look at teams with new eyes when you've been watching them for so many seasons. But I do think that Madison... I mean, I've never found her skating skills so offensive. I know there's been a lot of discussion about her skating skills being so much weaker. Mm -hmm. I thought she was good, and I think she's a sexy lady, and that's what really resonated mm -hmm. with me. I thought that she she had a genuine sex appeal performance level. That um, And they had she, shit programs for years. I mean, American in Paris, they were just corny. Um, well, what they won their world medals with were nothing like the quality of what they did this in year. coming well, sixth place here. Yeah, um, right. And I definitely respect that they've come back with new material and I, I, again this is a coaching move that I wouldn't have thought was sensible mm -hmm. when I heard about it like really why would you do that to yourself and yet obviously there's not an obvious bias in that camp because I think that they've been given good material and they've run with it even with engine and they're so. very similar to Marie France and Patch in terms of mm -hmm. the characters that they kind of portray on the ice and I could see them bringing inspiration from Marie France well, yeah, I didn't. In terms of chalk and bait, I, I yeah. certainly prefer free more than the rhythm dance because mm -hmm. he's not sexy the way that she is, and I mm -hmm. found that less comfortable in the rhythm dance. Mm -hmm. Whereas I was as aware, of it. that's that's always my critique of them is that I just he seems like a really nice guy, mm -hmm. but I don't get any sex appeal from it. And I think again, that is important. Mm -hmm. um, I well, and I. I, I... I kind of had the same response when I found out they were going to Montreal. I was like, oh, it seems like you not have a priority there. I'm, I'm confused by it. But then it does seem that that camp does a lot for empowering weaker female partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they do a good job, uh, and that's probably too harsh a wording, but I think they do 
a great job of drawing out confidence and raising the ability of of female skaters that may be matched with a superior partner. And I, I think they did that really well with her. Now, mind you, there used to be like stories like um, Phyllis Curtin was a soprano I knew and when she sang with Pavarotti in Vienna, like they had to put like Pavarotti, he was so fat and lazy at the time, they just like kind of put him in a chair and everyone had to act around him in a scene. And that's a little bit, I think what their approach was with Evan and Madison, because Evan is flying around her in order to kind of make the material a little simpler for her. And I think that's a brilliant way to do it because it shows off how good Evan really is. And it lets Madison do what Madison does, which is a phenomenal model, actress, performer. I bet she's great on a dance floor. Mm -hmm. um, she's the kind that would win Dancing with the Stars, in my opinion, because she does have an incredible performance quality. It was just sometimes the blade work didn't seem to match the rest of her performance levels, but they did such a good job of hiding it here that I, I would have placed them above Weaver and Poche. I would have had them in fifth place. I, yeah, I would have too. Um, the one thing I think over the summer, if they can work on her skating, I think skating bigger, faster will help them moving forward. I think if they could, because she was off the ice also for several months last summer. So I think we'll see the biggest improvement for them when they have a full spring summer of training moving forward. And, and, and for you guys that just um, the skating skill in terms of Flow and glide speed. Flow, glide, speed from her, I would say, yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I suppose in, in, in her defense, she appears to be the, the most petite and tiny of all the top girls at yes. the moment. That are, that, you know, there is an element of that. And then you also wonder whether or not is there the biggest height differentiation between them to all the other teams, and thus she's being compared to a bigger, stronger man, unlike Madison and Zachary, mm -hmm. who are more comparable in height. There may be an element of that mm -hmm. uh, as well, which, which perhaps disadvantages her um how you view her yeah well and it, it's like you say it's hard to look at a team in a new way oh, because, oh did he go away oh no he's there oh, okay because i i used to not be a fan but the material mm. this year has made me into a fan because i enjoyed this free dance so much like i think i wrote down i think the straight line lift is fabulous on, on mm. that diagonal with the snaps and stuff they they really took in they took the time to do very cool choreography and innovative and creative movement i have a question about the curve lift they did a curve lift that got like a level two into a curve lift that had a level four but mm. the curve lift got the level two was actually my favorite moment of their program which kind of jumps into his arms and they're like clapping hands you know from a part i think it's one of the coolest moves in the event and it just seemed like the judges weren't really ready to go with them. And I didn't know if that's because we missed them on the Grand Prix or well, the well, judges... that's interesting because after the rhythm dance were was it the top eight or the top seven just got level four awarded for everything. And I actually didn't look at the free dance with any technical specialist aspect whatsoever because the assumption was everybody's just gonna get level four for everything. Don't you think that was and... ridiculous? And I mean and What's that's a bit? that's a judge that's thought to be friendly to that school, right? Like What's that's the... David Molina who's from France, who is thought to be obviously with the Romain Haganau or Marie France Movement. school of thought, you know? Me, the, and it's not to say that they didn't all deserve level four. I didn't look at it, I looked at it from more program components perspective for the performances. But when you give the top eight, seven or eight level four for every element, it then makes it just old judging system really. And, and yeah. That may, that was one of the big things for me in the rhythm dance is looking at this as a sport now. It, it was just program components and GOEs and everybody was giving out high nines. It just made it, I, I just looked at the result before I saw the event and I just thought, well, how can you say to me that, you know, 9.32 skating skills for Weaver and Poge, 9.18 for Chalk and Bass. It's just, well, what is that? How are we judging the sport? I mean, I don't think I would like to have been a judge, but it just, it seemed to make a mockery of the system. It seemed very political, everything. There was a lot of, if you look at the different judges and how different it is on that skating scores page, you could see the different political motivations of the judges. And I just think that it, outside of Papadak and Cicerone, who were clearly superior to everyone else, the ranging of opinions just really kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I think. And, and we were, 
we were talking to Joe Inman, who was kind of like talking about how they set the bullet points at, at the ISU for all of these, you know, levels and plus GOEs and all this sort of stuff. Um, and it's just like when you're in the nines and it, we should really be having like a once in a lifetime historical performance moment. And, and it's just hard to justify that the top eight were that. I, they were all very good, but it seemed like a cop out to be like, eh, just throw them all there and then they can decide tomorrow. Well, that's what I felt a little bit. I thought it's interesting. Obviously, you've looked further into the judging uh, choices from each individual judge. But to me, it was like it doesn't it, it, you could be a biased judge in that block when you're working in such a, a small range and get right. away with it. Yeah, because right. it's like, well, OK, if I give nine points, I decided that and then I, I won Stepanova and Buchan or the Russians. I can give them nine point seven five and a nine point five to everybody else. But it'll make a massive difference because everybody's so close. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably anyway. So that to me was um, it was a real highlight from the rhythm dance. It was like this has to be considered moving forward. No, because has... if nobody's retiring, then we're going to have the same situation for the next for the rest of the Olympic cycle. What right. do you think about the Julian political push? The fact that last year they were pushing other teams, and now that Nikita is the top team in that camp, all of a sudden he went all the way up to second. I mean, they are a good team. I don't know if they had the most inventive free dance that we've ever seen before. I mean, what do you make of that? Oh, this is where, see, so you've, you've, you've done a really good job here because you've got me into it. You've got me excited and I think I could just run away with this and get <laughs> Twitter trolling and abuse. Um, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I think I, potentially I could have had any of the top six teams on the podium. I thought they were all brilliant. For me, I preferred Hubble and Donahue for sure. Weaver and Poche, Chalk and Bates. Mm -hmm. you, the Julian's team I, I, I was I, I watched them and then thought god you know, was that really worth a second at the World Championship and then I reviewed everybody else and still thought that I didn't think it was worthy then I had to take another look at it just to check and they do have what appears to be the most ice coverage mm -hmm. so if I was a devil's advocate I could say knowing that the skating skills component scores the most heavily weighted they cover the ice most they perhaps have the most flow and glide there's an argument to be said for why they did as well as they did for me i, I i'm not as big a fan for me it was, it was the least matched stylistically mm -hmm. these, two, these two skaters i don't think eh, difficult dangerous but for me i don't think that there's as much work in fundamental skating technique to match these two up that there is or obviously has been in the others when I look at Hubble and Donahue, they obviously move in the same way. They have been trained in the same way. When I see that from Papadakis and Cizeron, even Weaver and Poche, they all move fundamentally the same way. And there were so many times when I watched them, it's you know, like South and I thought, oh, this is the leg lines aren't matched up. Um, I was just, I, I wrote down the free legs never seem to be matching or they don't seem to be committing to the same program. They're kind of mm -hmm. doing, they're doing in two different programs. They just kind of happen to be on the ice at the same time. And I was going to ask you about you know, their twizzles have, have often given them trouble. Mm -hmm. And he kind of reaches up like this a little yeah. bit. In this free dance, he shifted the whole weight all the way up. He's and it really was... high in the knee and the shoulders when he twizzles. And, and yeah. yeah, like he didn't like, and this is this is hyper nitpicky, but I suppose, you know, if we're looking at these results in the free dance and the judges are giving them 9.5s and 9.75s, so we have to be hyper nitpicky. But he doesn't even extend and hold his free foot in the same way as she does. And I think, mm -hmm. oh, Surely that's fairly fundamental at this level that they should both be stylistically supremely well matched. However, like I said, when I watched it back, ice coverage was incredible, speed and flow was incredible, and they are probably the, the sort of poster childs for what you would want to put together. Mm -hmm. you know, tall, strong, powerful, confident, sexy man, beautiful, long leggy limbs gorgeous mm -hmm. girl they are you know they are the classic look um and they would always be a force to be reckoned with and i still think they were worthy of being top five top six just for me personally i, I wouldn't have had them there now personally i have said all season i think that hubble and donahue's material was really uninspired this season i think that when you keep tinkering a free dance and changing the music and sometimes not changing the choreography then other times changing the choreography to match the music, it's just felt like a mismatch the whole season. She she also overpowers him at times, just in her performance. 
and I get mm. like, a, and I am a huge Hubble and Donahue fan, but I have to say this season, I think that it's been just a miss from moment one. And it, and I agree, and I agree with you, Dave. I think you'd know that. Like, I, I'm disappointed because I love this team so much, and they they project such strength and power. And so I want them to go all the way with that. But even in their powerful lifts and things like that, compared to Nikita, like when he would catch her out of a lift, there was almost a thud to it. Like there was one moment in their free dance. You mean Nikita? Where did I write? There's, a, there's a thud to Nikita? Yeah. Victoria and Nikita, like um, he, he, catches, yeah. he catches her right into the straight line lift. And, and it was like, a, oh, you know, it, it had that kind of jolty awkward. I just think politically, Julin took the fact that Hubble and Donahue have had an uninspired year and people are kind of down on them and they move forward. I think the fact that they're one of their competitors' mother uh, was a caller at another competition is also suspect. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Which just shows you the power of momentum and ice dance yeah. because when, when Hubble and Donahue were, how many seasons were they kind of world medalists? Yeah. They were vying for the Shibitanis, they were vying for that national title and everybody was behind them and excited and they did the hallelujah short dance that yeah, everybody loved. Which was loved, beautiful, yeah. Which was stunning. And there was that kind of like crowd favorite, fan favorite, skater favorite desire for them to be pushed. Last year, world silver medalists. And then, you know. They went conservative know. this year. Like they tried to be the romantic team they that tried they're to, not. They're, they're kind of that rock and roll edge what, team. Yeah, they tried to be what the reigning silver medalists in the world should do instead of be authentically them and a little yeah. raw, which is what got them there to begin with. Yeah, and it's going to be really interesting now to see where that goes now moving forwards because will they come back now with a – because obviously this season, that result, not as good as last year, has right. a total different motivation and energy going forward. So it'll be really interesting to see what they come out with. I'm really looking forward to seeing what yeah. they come out with next year I because think, I think we all agree that we love them. Yeah, yeah, and I think last year they had this like rock and roll sexy energy, but this year – when you're looking at them as a romantic couple with Romeo and Juliet, and you can kind of see that she runs the show. Like, she is a girl who knows what she wants, and he has to, like, especially as we've seen just their whole characters through their careers, where they have to, like, get Zach focused. And you can kind of see, like, her dominating him, and it's almost... It's strange to watch for me. It's like a Romeo and Juliet, where Juliet is dominating Romeo for four minutes, and I find it it takes me out of their magic, right? Like, it's just like, it was such a mismatch in there. She's a strong girl, but... And I think the danger, I mean, and this is where we all probably come into this again from a, a, a skating obsessive bad yeah. point. Anybody that t takes on Romeo and Juliet is going to be compared with Marina Nassina and Gwenda Pesa, and you're just put, you're just, it's just such a hard, you know, why do that to yourself? <laughs> yeah. And we were talking a little bit about this in the the ladies recap. Also, we, um, Dave, we were talking about warriors versus lovers, and 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 we're being sold this material that they're lovers. And I was like, but I kind of want them side by side together, displaying strength and power. And I think because it's what makes them so unique, and they can do better than anybody else. Is is kind of own this space and this authority. It's authoritative skating, much more so than the French, you know, but, but, but then what instead of a... would you use for that? Like that's, I totally agree with you, but then ice dance and dance is about connection between man and woman and it's sexual right. energy. What, do They've they have lost to go their down connection a Duchenne, too. Do they have to go down a Duchenne kind of route and be jungle-like or, you know? Yeah. I'd be here for it. I say yes. Okay. <laughs> I loved that jungle program in 1988 when no one else did. <laughs> but what about like the drums that Krilova and Ovzianikov did? What, mm -hmm. that, that same kind of route? I think that this, I would be curious what really motivated them with this music and who picked it and why. Um, and what the real original idea was. Um, I think that it just seems that in the past, he has a more rocker vibe to him than this kind of like sweet classical music. And I think the kissing you need is completely played out and dated and needs to be. I, it, it may be, I mean, I, I, we should ask him, but it may be that a lot of skaters have got pieces of music that they've always wanted to use. You know, every yeah. girl wants at one point a Carmen or a Malaguena. And yeah. I think play for 
for Madison is that it may be that I've always wanted to use this piece and, and they were told that they were ready and it was right for them. It would be interesting to know. Because the interesting is with this new end, right, there was a bit more this feeling of chaos, like two lovers were being pulled apart. But mm. I was like, we've become so numb to the story. Like, mm. oh yeah, Romeo and Juliet, oh, they fall in love. Oh, they can't be together. Oh, they die. But it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, if you ever like remember what that story actually means and like if they had played up this struggle of coming together and like being torn apart with like kinds of choreographic moves, I don't know, I think it could have had an earthier, more visceral appeal. Mm. But a lot of the judges, four of the judges had them in second place here. Like they they were truly right there. Well, they were really strong skaters with material yeah. that was... My fear is that the Russians are getting cocky and now they're going to come for the French next season politically. They're going to try. Wow. I, I think it's just as absurd. But Dave, you called this at the beginning of the year. You said, watch Julian. He's going to push. They're going to be. The I did predict medal. that it would be one, two, three, four. I did get that right. Um, but you, but you got that right in like August. You, you, you saw politically the maneuver that was happening. Yeah, I was impressed. I'm I, good at predicting like, no, ice dance. You know? I was like, no, no, no. Hubble and Donahue will be silver. I told you it was a shit program all year. And wow. Yes. But I don't think it's because um, Victoria and Nikita necessarily have quality material because to me, I leave their material not understanding what I just saw. It's not memorable. It doesn't but they're have more romantic. Idea. And this with Madison and Zach, it's just... I don't know, even the physicality, their costumes were really muted and the whole look of the whole thing was wrong. I really think that she, they need to rethink who does her costumes. And I know that her mom and the, her make them together. I just don't think that they look. Uh, Pop it I up. Like your just, dance. I yeah. like Yeah. The, the, I think for the free dance, it was a real. I'm not... curious. I'm curious, Mark, to get your take on the skating skill difference between Buchan and um, Nikita. Because what's happening, and this is what I thought might have happened here, is that the Russians were definitely ready to push a team. Yeah. And they couldn't quite figure out which one. And at the Grand Prix, you know, Nikita, you know, surpassed the other, and then Buchan was surpassing at Europeans. So I thought maybe they were too unorganized to kind of make a real push here. But it did seem like everyone got behind the Julin team. And the Stepanova and Buchan have such like a razzle dazzle performance, like Ashley Wagner, like glitz and glam kind of approach. And but it seems like they are severely lacking in their skating skills compared to Victoria and Nikita. I don't know what's your take on that. Well, it, it's interesting because um, I remember when I went when I was competing a million years ago, and then when I was out, out, a, couple, out a couple of internationals, Zhuk is it Irina Zhuk and Zenitsyn. Mm -hmm. um, have so many like they had advanced novice russian teams loads of junior russian teams and they were all the same they all looked like uh yana kuklova sergey Novitsky kind of mold which i couldn't um, stand by the way <laughs> it, no, interesting but from a from a coaching perspective it was really interesting to see this um conveyor belt of same teams and there was obviously the common denominator because their style was so similar were the coaches um and it's a bit like a teddy you know a lot of people don't really like what they see coming but you can't help but respect mm -hmm. that there's a process that is being followed through repeatedly and consistently and what was more impressive from that coaching team was that i was seeing it at advanced novice levels so there were obviously and i think you know when you think of the pan of book and they've been with them mm -hmm. forever you know that doesn't happen everybody chops and changes and they've been with them for forever but then now, when you see that same style, that same technique now competing for a world medal, it's very stylized. They're further forward. The hips are further back, I think. Um, and it's stylized to a point that it's boxed up. It's like it's boxed up, and that's the, it's the pan of a book and style, and that's the way that they skate. And it, 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 uh, I, I find know, it I sloppy. Um. The posture I, is sloppy for me. Posture is sloppy. I think that, that I think there's probably been an approach that they do lean forward, the incline forward to create more speed, yeah. um, and it's been a, a proactive stance because I see it in so many of their young teams and above. But um, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the Hubble and Donahue more open approach. She can't even hit a nice 
lift a lot of times even like especially when they were doing the tango um they were getting ripped apart kind of on us tv because they were ben Augusta was looking at just the like, overall lines and the lifts and i think from the overall skating they don't have the same stretch and positions you know when you're her legs are good yeah i think often her legs can her leg is great yeah. Yeah. yeah legs are good but i think partially it can be further tipped forward um and it, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that, but I don't know if that will ever change now because they seem so cemented with that coaching team. It'd be int- but it'll be interesting again now. They're looking at being fourth in the world and comparing with the others. I wonder what a team like that, who's so set in its way, who were junior world champions like a million seasons ago, what can they do to improve? What can they do to change? And will they change? It's interesting that they kind of copied Hubble and Donahue's free dance last year, even going to the same musical artist. But this song was kind of less good, and I felt like it, the program just seemed endless. Where it was, it was. But like, I was very appreciative of their rhythm dance music yes. because they took yeah. that like French take on car, yeah. like they created a, a, a Spanish tango thing around a roundabout way, which just as a listener after eight million rhythm dances is just nice to to get and it work. Yeah. Yes, I thought it was effective it had in the way. a ton of razzle dazzle. You know, it was a lot of a lot of chemistry, a lot of mm-hmm. you know fast flurried performance. I don't know. It mm-hmm. it bamboozled you. It it, it mm-hmm. was easy to be lulled into thinking it was better than it was. Maybe. Mm-hmm. So I, I think in, in comparison between the two Russian teams, for for me when I watched the free dances, I thought I think that Tapanova and Bukin look like more conscientiously trying. Mm-hmm. Yes. But um, Sinatina and Kasapov are just more aesthetically, more correct. And it, mm-hmm. Maybe it's that fundamental skating stance is, mm-hmm. is more right. Um, and yeah. I think also Kasapov has such a kind of air of confident arrogance about his movement that it sells it really well. Stepanov is an interesting girl. Bukin, not as much of an interesting performer. Um, well, I don't they, know. <laughs> I... I find Stepanov to be a really a star, right? Who, even in spite of the posture that I look for in a top female ice dancer, she's certainly not a test of virtue, but I find that she, there's a Energy. real performer there. You know, like she is really giving it. And okay. whereas Sinitsina just, she hides back. You know, she's I, not an interesting flower. I Stepanov. It's the kind of a Katsalapov combination would be interesting, but I think that might be like a, a, a <laughs> to Elena <laughs> Elenik, like it just would blow up. Yeah. Now, what do you make of her and Soloviev? I mean, they're always teasing if they're going to come back or not. You know, they have rumors that, you know, Julian would take them. You, I kind of don't think at this point we'll ever see her skate again. I think it's unfortunate, but could you see her? That, yeah. That would be That would be interesting. But then I remember when she came back, I just, I just, it really broke my heart when she came back. And then, what did she do? That Bollywood number? Yeah. That that just totally killed the Black Swan memory for me. Yeah. So right. now, if she's going to come back, please come back and be comparable with Black Swan with whatever you yeah. do, because I don't want to see, I don't want you to further rip apart my memory of Black Swan with Bollywood right. stuff. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, with no. Soloviev, it would be at least a great partner to skate with, which, yeah. So, I'm very like how can you that's that's the reason i kind of wish kind of glad that i'm not competing with this group of skaters now how can a new team now come in now you know you're looking like papadakis and cesar have been together for forever all of these teams now have just been together for such a long period of time that i think even if you put two talents together it's not going to be comparable it takes it, it, it now i think to be a world's top 10 ice dancer your investment in that process needs to be a decade long with the same partner now, what do you make yeah, of Piper? Me. Piper and Paul looked really disappointed uh, in the free dance. Just they kept being like, okay, okay. And they looked like they were going to have a good cry backstage. Um, so have they pushed the gimmicky stuff as far as they can? I mean, I thought that Vincent was sweet and it was nice, but I didn't think that the music went anywhere. You know, like and Jonathan loved it more than I did. I really was kind of... I thought it was muted. not not necessarily uh, out of their entire body of work. I think they've yeah. done much more interesting stuff. Um, but I did enjoy this free dance very much. I thought it was uh, nice, I, but I thought it was just nice. I didn't think it was uh, mind blowing. To, to be honest, it was one of my favorite free dances of the year. Um, okay, great. I, that, now I'll admit that it was mine too. <laughs> one of mine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite free dances of the year, and I think 
what they do, if I was to look for, you know, when I'm choreographing, obviously you go, you have a look, you're always looking at other sources. They're always the ones that think, gosh, every time I see them, they've got different movement. Absolute mm-hmm. respect to them and Caroline and Judith and whoever's working with them because they're always unique in their delivery. And I, I suppose the thing is, though, that their skating style is quite British. Like his st- skating style can be quite British, and it is British because obviously Carol's British. But it's almost like their skating fundamental skating skill technique is incongruous with their quirky choreographic mm. approach. Mm. You know? But uh, how much is her be- lack of posture and line why they're quirky? You know, to me, at the end of the day, she is very hunched forward. The leg is not. I don't think that she can stretch her leg more than she does. Um, otherwise, she would. But to me, that's what's really held them back, is her aesthetic. And it's just gone as far as they kind of are going to go. You but know, then I, would... don't think that her, her, I don't think that her skating skills are any more offensive than Stepanova. It's right, and I don't love either. But to me, they're shorter. And when you're shorter and you've got the lack of posture, she doesn't, it doesn't make her look big. She's not, like when you see Mark Hanready when he is showing off in the dancing on ice, he is milking how far. I mean, he's stretching that leg further than Mariah Bell skating by Ensu, okay? Like, it is so stretched, <laughs> such a diva. And it's like, you're a female ice dancer, you should be trying to look like Tessa Virtue. And she's hunchy, and to me, he's short and she's hunchy. And they kind of, you know, it's like um, Gala Rabinowitz and David Mitchell or whatever, you know, like when they used to call them the gerbils. Like, it's just like too small to ever really be competitive in ice dance. Well, that's the, that's the, the, the place. It, is that the place that we're at in ice dance now? Is it the place that, with everybody staying around for so long and with mm. teams that are so seasoned and experienced, that now your chances are dependent upon your genetics? Yeah. Is it, is it, is it, is it the question that they have just now gone as far as they've gone because of their physical match? I, I'd like to think no, because sometimes I'm surprised by people, and I think, though, that they would just have to do so much work to overturn that. You know, the, 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 what they have to do is probably greater than what Sinatina and Katsalipov have to do because of their, their more yeah. perfect mold. They're more perfect to... model looks, and they have the right politics. And for a Canadian but team it... that's ranked second, I think it's... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jonathan is like, no! <laughs> I love them! Um, I, I actually, go. They are a team, though, that I do want to see. Like, they're a team that I really do want to see again. Like, I want to see I them. like to see them. Yeah. 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 Whereas the, the Russians are sent back because they're, they're incredible, but I don't. And that's from a skater standpoint. I don't like. I'm not particularly bothered about what they do next year. Mm-hmm. And that's very honest. But, like, I wouldn't go back and watch one of the Russian programs probably after this World Championships. And something like the Vincent program is unique enough. Like, for me, it's these small moments. Like, I wrote down, like, the picture they're creating in the curve lift and I, the stationary lift at the end. And, like, mm. that they're doing these things that grab my attention that make them feel like performing artists. Like, they're ones, I think, that... Um, have have been done a real disservice by the lack of show skating because I think actually them in shows they would constantly be doing fun and quirky things but they seem always like they're going to be stuck in place because judges don't think they have good skating skills and the rhythm dance in particular and I'm intrigued do you think there is a rhythm dance that would help them more than another because the rhythm dance is really where they continually get buried well like a Yankee polka Right? Yeah. Or like, can we make he's some stiff. weird modernist thing, a uh, rhythm he's dance? A, yeah. <laughs> he's a little bit stiff of a guy too. And I think that that's hard because who is the flower here, right? Like with, he's a good looking guy. He's a little bit stiff as a performer and he's a little bit stiff just in his body when he skates. So it's, it's a little hard to sell them because you're selling them as a unit, but usually there's a focal point and I just, I think it's if you hard. wanted to have a memorable moment, she should have cut off his ear in the middle of the choreographic <laughs> sequence well, as Vincent Van Gogh, and then they could have been a medalist. I just like, <laughs> so at the end, when they're at the end of their free dance and it's sliding and it's sweet, but it's the end of a free dance at Worlds, you kind of want to let it rip. And he is a little hold back. She seems more fire, but they just, it's like, 
a push but to and me pull. that that that's his like artist soul is not going with the obvious like this is at the ice end, dance where subtle. Krilova would stab her partner if she could <laughs> you know like this yeah. is ice dance like yeah go and it's a it's a subtle corner, kind of cool you know? thing they go for and the subtlety seems to not really be rewarded this is like a soap opera your... acting you know <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you think about them as a painting though like they're such a, a north american painting they were too good like i don't know where she was she, was tim mckern and her last partner but she, like she was like junior grand prix level good she was with zach donahue for a lot for a while and then they they broke up romantically and they could uh, the last year that they were skating together they like couldn't stand each other she was with tim so, yeah so, so like but they they were formed because they were like they had to kind of form together whereas in russia formations are made because of physiques and and there's a pool of bodies from which to choose from whereby these two kind of had to go together because they were the right, a good enough physical match and a decent enough skating ability and a decent enough financial match. It was a situational match. Yeah, yeah. Well, he needed another partner. A He's shorter. A situational match. How perfectly described. A situational match. But they've done an incredibly good job with what I think it's probably very different. Like you were saying, he's an artist soul. He's a creative soul. And he is obviously very different in temperament to her fiery feistiness. And I almost respect that more that they continue, they've continue. they come out with material when they've come from such different spheres as opposed to what I, I presume the Russians come from. And when yeah. comparing it even to Weaver and Poget, like I do believe their subtext, Piper and Paul. I believe that they yeah. believe in their material and they are doing it in an honest and earnest way where sometimes like Caitlin's a little more over the top and a little, I'm going to, a little more soap opera acting than honest kind of revealing of a soul a little bit. And so sometimes next to each other, it's more off-putting for me to watch Weaver and Poggi at times because it seems so put on and artificial. But with Weaver and Poggi, don't you think that they've come from, like, I feel with Weaver and Poggi, they've been trying to push for results. They've gone to these yes. coaches for the political pool for results. It's like, they don't, don't know who they are as people, but you could tell that in their interviews that she's trying to act like a top girl who doesn't know who she is, right? Like she lacks like, a point of view. That's, I wonder, what, like with them, I do genuinely question what is it that, that they want? Is it a world title? Is it a world medal? Whereas with Piper and Paul, I am a bit confused because obviously they're still putting themselves under the speculation of the judges and they do look disappointed when the scores aren't as they want. But I, I agree with you, Jonathan, that they seem to be satiating their own creative pursuits. Right. Less at the, at the interest of the result than perhaps Caitlin and Andrew. So if Tessa uh, Virtue I... and Scott Moyer had like a skating troupe, right? Like they John Curried it and picked people. I have no real desire to watch Weaver and Poget be in a, rather than like, if we're gonna thank Canada and just be patriotic, I would rather see Piper and Paul from an interesting point of who could create something worth watching, I think they would be more interesting. And that's why, so. and that's why if I were Tessa, I would invite Caitlin and Andrew instead to my tour. Do you see what uh, I'm saying? Yeah, do you yeah. see, like, do you know, you don't need to be um, Any more upstaged by something They would never upstage Tessa Virtue. Are you kidding? You are on crack, I wouldn't, honey. I wouldn't want the competition. I wouldn't want no, the, I would like competition? a nice second. Competition? I would like the nice second. They're like play. the nice quirky people that lead off an act, like the you know. No, like but, the, they, you know. but to, to an audience of to an audience of paying customers coming to watch sure. skating, some members of that audience would look at Piper and Paul and remember them more than maybe Tess and Scott. Whereas I don't think anybody would remember Kit and Andrew necessarily more than Tess and Scott. They, they might, would be talking more about a Piper and Paul program after an event than they would be talking about a Weaver and Poche event. Well, yeah. I think that you can't, it's like stars and ice. You came because Christy and Scott were the headliners and Kurt and Paul Wiley is the, the fan favorite that keeps you coming back. And I think that Piper and Paul would serve that. Whereas Weaver and Poggi are more of the bathroom break during a show. Like, <laughs> like honestly, wait. I think that they're going to stay in until they get a Canadian championships, Piper and Paul. That's what I think. Cause I don't know that Weaver and Poggi will last till Beijing. Uh, but I think Piper and Paul would probably try to get that national I, championship yeah. and to finally have that credit could help them in a major way. I do see how that could help them coaching, choreographing, whatever they end up doing afterwards. Um, that, that cachet would help a lot. 
But when we compare these teams, like those two teams, it's the same with so many of these in the top ten in the world. Now, I would hire if I was hiring them as a show producer, I would hire them for different purposes, and that's why you know we're critiquing them all. They're all brilliant and marvelous. Mm. I, I would hire them all for different purposes. It's just a shame that we've got to put them in a competitive sphere and judge them on these program component scores rather than just appreciate their brilliance and their uniqueness. And that's... Yeah, that's well, they that. choose to compete in a sport. This is not... Uh, it's just a pageant. But it's, 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 you know. Do they choose to compete because they don't have another voice for their craft? Because there is I think so, yeah. For yeah. what they're doing. And that's why I think... Like, that's the thing that I find really fascinating is now that I have... I can do some more like creatively freaky stuff. Not on, uh, but then there's these much better skaters, these world top skaters. I think they're going to get lost. Like that's mm. a kind of a, a genuine concern for me. There's so yeah. many of these skaters, like skaters. Like I, I'm going to be working on our John Curry show this summer, and I need to hire skaters. And I would love to pick some of these skaters, but I can't because they're too good for it in a way. But they've not got the chance to experience this cool quirky perfect not quirky cool professional opportunity and i think that must be a real challenge for so many of these skaters they must be really especially the ones that are coming back year and year and year i think must be a real kind of mind mm -hmm. yeah okay. now let's talk about the french because they did win they are absolutely in my mind the best i think that the difference between first Dave, and can i make a small request because I, I think we should end with the french for sure but i just am dying to know mark can you explain why i'm supposed to like this italian team so much why oh, they're sure. so relevant i'm just dying to to find a better appreciation of them the sure, barber who's our goalie team yeah uh, <laughs> um i mean i think they like they have good really good skating skills like respect to barbara they have Fundamental, like they come from the same school of training. Like they're obviously they obviously do their work on their basic to match up, and because he's a tiny guy too, like Jean Luc. When amazing. you when you see him amongst all the other dancers, he's literally half the height of some of the men. Yeah, and his boots are twice the height of every other man. His boots are amazingly built up. Um, I just think that what he what he does lift wise is incredible, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I just think that they're you know really nice team they're boring Techni they're nice and boring but te right? technically proficient like i think for them they seem to be one that really benefit from the rhythm dance mm -hmm. because it's clear barbara is driving home like all these particular points to make sure you know that they're getting them um because so they seem to be placing a bronze at europeans a bronze at the, the grand prix final and it i'm trying to find an appreciation for them and i'm struggling Oh, well, I, I suppose I look at it from a slightly different angle as far as, like, from a coach or choreographic point of view, I think, oh, there's good work being put into them, but there's only so much that you can do. Like, it's just like we're saying about Caitlin and Jean-Luc. There's only mm. so much that you can do with what you're given, and that's where if you've got a Gabby and a Guillaume who have these sinewy long limbs, it's very difficult to compare. But I look mm. at it from a coaching standpoint, and I think Barbara has, there's a lot of respect to be given to Barbara for what she's done with that team. Hmm. Now, how about Papadakis and Cizeron, the new look this year? I, you know, they're originally, people always accuse them of doing the same thing. I actually think that this one is very different, especially as it's evolved. I think that it really shows off uh, Gabby for maybe the first time that this is really about her. And that last minute, she, when they're doing the side-by-side -side skating, I think it's really incredible that she is such a performer, she completely upstages him when they do the side-by-side -side skating when they're apart. Um, she is just so captivating to watch at the end. And this seems very female-driven, this piece. What did you make of it? I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, I'm the biggest fan of Guillaume Cesar on yeah. skating. He bend is phenomenal, his extension is phenomenal. And yet, Gabby was the one that I watched this whole free dance. And actually, yeah. uh, when they finished, I'm glad I wasn't commentating on that because I think... I, I was moved, emotionally moved by it. I just thought she was stunning. And actually what was really interesting was that the poignant moment that I have is when I, I tuned in and I saw their first stance and the way that she looked at him was so convincing. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, you're, you're such a special girl. And what I'm about to say is, is I should maybe think about it, but she's not, like I think of a um, Senate Cena and she's so mm -hmm. classically beautiful. 
but Gabriella has something just so engaging and so yeah. real and the up. eyes are incredible especially yeah she brings um, a lot of warmth to the team because he's so beautiful but he is more remote and she kind of draws balances that and 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 i i really am intrigued by them because obviously now we can look on social media and get a little bit of an insight into people's lives and i think that does inevitably affect our consideration of them when they give a love story Mm -hmm. But like they, they really because I, I I know they're not a couple off the ice. But if I didn't watch social media, I might believe it. And I think that. But it's really... it's a it's a it's a sense that there is care, mm -hmm. and ah. that there is. I mean, and that's what is so, you respond to whether it, whether he loves her like a sister or not. It doesn't matter. You see a gentleness and a quality that just kind of draws you in. And it's the kind of thing I was like trying to take feverish notes because I was like, oh, I like that rotational this. Oh, I like that curve left here. And they were one where you just put the pencil down because yeah. you're like to, to write it, to analyze it, to watch the GOE is to miss the point. So I'm just going to sit back and take it in. Yeah, I completely agree. And that is it's like art rather than skating competition. Mm -hmm. And actually, but they do they're they've struck gold because not just less little gold in the competitive world, but they have transcended mm -hmm. the requirements of the sport to still let us appreciate them as art. Whereas we've talked about Piper and Paul and their creativity, but their skating skills or the physical aesthetic don't allow us to appreciate in the same vein that we can with Gabby and Guillaume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting, Dave, when you, when we talk about certain levels and, and footwork sequences or whatever, and we're talking about the different levels, like physically, that people are doing, the opening stationary lift that they do seems so difficult because it is on so many different planes. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just right off the get go, not only is it beautiful and sweeping and lyrical, but it's also quite technical. Like the, the twizzles when they leave them, it just feels easy. Mm. Like you don't see the concentration or the grit, but yet obviously it was there in order for it to be so successful, but I'm not noticing each element as an element, which I, I think is a plus. I have to say, they to me, they're like 25 to 30 points better than the rest of the field. I would have them ahead of Hubble and Donahue. They're just like mind, like blowingly better. And I think that this extra year and the extra, per, all the shows that they do, I think are only helping them at this point, in addition to coming back to the competitive arena. I mean, they have to, they're obviously not being pushed competitively by anyone, but I think at the same which, point- Which I think helps them. Mm. I think it helps them enjoy and perform versus compete. I think that they are more interesting this year in some respects because they just wanted to develop and the other team had wanted to develop them and they've really developed her a lot. And I think that that's going to lend itself to more interesting things in the future. It's interesting when you, you say, but you believe they should be 25, 30 points ahead of the rest of the other teams. And I, and I do agree with that. And when I watched, I saw results first and component scores and I was seeing 10s and thinking it can't be... It can't be 10. It kind of frustrates me to think that something can be 10 because I'm sure we could all nitpick on mm -hmm. replay. But then, you know, when you watch the others know that they're getting nines, then they should have been getting 11s. Yeah. Comparatively, yeah. If the going rate for teams three through eight are in the nines anyway, then it, you have to give the 10 in order to, to maintain rank. Yeah, absolutely. I, but I, I mean, when I just watched the opening, more the free dance mm -hmm. than the rhythm dance, certainly. But when I watched the first five mm -hmm. seconds in fact even just the way the students she looked at i was like oh well these guys are better yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right as we both teams i think gabby and guillaume virtue and moyer they've maximized and virtue more last year you know they kind of maximize their partnerships the rules everything because they've been together so long they uh they skate in such harmony and they've mastered the technical elements it's interesting to see those two push and i think hubble and donahue maybe get close where they approach things like they have really skating in harmony. But I think with Hubble and Donahue, their own mistakes and they don't have quite the same skating skills of the other team. It'll be interesting to see kind of moving forward, you know, what happens. But um, yeah. I'm really, really keen to see again, I'm well, keen to see what they all do, but with Papadakis and Cicero, and obviously they've got to ride out to win an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see what muses they use because they're in an environment where they're so exposed to other people on the same path. I wonder how much, because if, if I was them and I'd be interested to see what the coaches do, I would want to remove, the, remove them and take them to 
like like your world, Jonathan, like something elite right. in a different sphere to find mm. fresh inspiration, inspiration elsewhere. Things. Yeah, exactly. You know, they're going to go into the Olympics, potentially as six-time world champions. That's going to be very interesting. You know, they're going to go in as legends, finally getting the gold. There's going to be all of those, like, voiceovers. You could just imagine and, the And Olympics then what do you are... think, Dave? Do you think that they've thought to the Olympics already? And they may have an idea of the kind of programs they're kind of holding for that? Or do you think the minute they have an idea, they're applying it? I don't know. I think that that comes in time with development, yeah. right? Oh, so. Yeah. Well, that depends upon what their is their motivation Olympic gold or is their motivation artistic pursuit. I, I think one's both, more noble, plus, but yeah. <laughs> and obviously, they're doing financially extremely well, doing the shows that they do in Japan in Autumn Ice and with the competitive money. You know, like they're staying yeah. in. It kind of they're kind of getting it's, the best of both worlds. And I'm glad. Yeah, because uh, if you think if you know if Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer have their own show, right? They cannot necessarily do all of the gigs that you would want to hire someone. If you want to hire a dance team, you want to hire either Gabby and Guillaume or Tessa and Scott or both. So, mm -hmm. I think it's very lucrative for them the next couple of years, and obviously it keeps them hyper relevant, winning on top. So, yeah. well, I'm glad. I just want to see them all the time. What was the moment of the championship for you? Uh, for me, uh, there were lots of, I thought it was an incredible event. Probably the moment for the championship for me was when Gabby looked at Guillaume at the start of the free dance and I was just like, wow. <laughs> okay. but, just look, it was like close up. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch this look. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny to be like, I want someone to look at me the way Gabby looks at Guillaume. That's <laughs> not something I thought I would be saying, but here we are. Um, How about for you, uh, what, Jonathan? Okay, so there's a curve lift in the rhythm dance that they do. <clears throat> and there's this like suspension in the music, you know, where it's like, da, da, before it like kind of resolves. And they are holding the tension of the music in the curve lift. And it's when you just want to throw up your hands and be like, I don't even know why anyone else is competing. I don't know why <laughs> I've ever thought I've been artistically smart because this is so creative and so genius. The, the match in that, lift alone with a suspension in the music is just further proof that we're dealing with a total next level on, on, mm -hmm. across the board on the skaters, on the team, on the approach, on the ideology is just all the points. Mm -hmm. all well, the points. I have to say we spent the first four years of them talking about Guillaume and how brilliant he is that I didn't talk about it, you know, this episode as much, but I have to say, the last minute of their free dance, just watch Gabriella Papadakis when you watch it back. And to me, that was the moment because this was, I felt like this was her Lilith Fair concert and this was just amazing. So, And that's what I feel like that team up there is really doing to empowering female partners. You've mm -hmm. seen partners like Gabby, like uh, Madison Chalk, like Caitlin Hawaii, kind of just find new footing in confidence. And I think that's pretty amazing whether or not it results in a, competitive win or not it's just kind of amazing to see those those ladies kind of step up and be encouraged i think that's awesome i think it's awesome so as always I want to remind you to hold an edge and look sexy bye guys